Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at some of the guns that they are going to be selling in their upcoming December of 2017 Premier Auction. And today we're taking a look at a Lindsay, a young American brand, two-shot single barrel Marshall pistol. Now this is, there are a couple other guns out there that are built along these lines, the most notable of them being the Walch revolver, which is a five chamber and 10 shot revolver. The idea here is you actually have two hammers and two percussion caps, but one barrel. There are two flash holes. One goes to the back, one goes a little bit farther forward, and what you do is load powder and a ball, and then a second charge of powder and a second ball. And you fire the front one first, and uh, it seals against the, the rear ball, fires the front one, and then you fire the rear one and it fires a second shot. Now there is no, the, the origin story behind this, this gun is apocryphal. We don't know if it actually happened or not. It's one of those things that sounds awfully convenient. Maybe it really did happen, uh, or maybe this was just the result of a, a random visit from the good idea fairy to J.P. Lindsay, the inventor. But at any rate, the story is that Lindsay's brother was in the military and uh, was attacked by Indians and had two charging him and he uh, was quite the good marksman and he brought up his musket and he shot one of them and then while fumbling to reload the gun he was killed by the other. Hence, Lindsay decided that had his brother had a gun that had two shots in it then he would have survived and been alive to this day. So did this actually happen? Eh, who knows. Uh, it certainly does sound like a good marketing story, though. Well, regardless of the veracity of the story, Lindsay did, in fact, manufacture these guns. Uh, or rather, Lindsay invented them, and he contracted to have them manufactured by the Union Knife Company of Naugatuck, Connecticut. And they manufactured actually four different guns of this design, or of this system. Uh, three different pistols and a rifle. The three pistols were, uh, two, the first two were 41 caliber guns, a, uh, a like a five inch barrel belt model and a four inch barrel pocket model. And then this, the larger uh, eight inch barrel um, Marshall model, I suppose you'd call it, which is actually a 45 caliber piece. So let's take a closer look. I'll show you how the trigger mechanism actually runs on this. So this is a pretty chunky pistol. It's got a fairly long barrel, um, eight inches, about 200 millimeters, 205 millimeters maybe. Uh, a single trigger, in, and in this case, it uh, differentiates itself from the Walch revolvers, which had double triggers. Uh, we do have, of course, two hammers, and the idea here is this is a selective trigger. So it will fire the right hammer first. The right hammer is the front charge, so the, uh, the, the fire chamber, the fire hole, uh, from this percussion cap nipple runs a little bit farther forward through the breech, um, out to, uh, it's going to be something like probably there, uh, and it will detonate the charge out there first, and then the left hand hammer fires a uh, charge located back here. The trigger will fire the right one first, and then you have to release the trigger, it will reset, and then it will fire the left. Now, interestingly, if you only cock the left hand hammer, pulling the trigger will fire it. So. There are a number of ways in which using this pistol can go quite badly for you. Um, one of them would be, well, there are a number of situations. If you, for example, are in combat and manage to lose the percussion cap on the right chamber uh, and go and pull the trigger, nothing will happen. And then it really has a quite light reset and re-pull for the left-hand trigger. And if you do that, well, then you're gonna fire the rear charge in front of what is basically an obstructed barrel. Now. Now the barrel wall on this thing is really remarkably thick, much thicker than I would have would expect to be necessary for a 45 caliber black powder handgun. And that does make me wonder if Lindsay was deliberately trying to make this strong enough that it could withstand firing a double charge if, if that was done unintentionally. That would make sense. Um, Lindsay wasn't a complete amateur. He was a former employee of the Springfield Armory. Um, and the more I look at this, the more I think that he deliberately made this capable of firing a double charge if necessary. You certainly wouldn't want to do that. Um, the whole purpose of this is being able to fire twice, not to fire two projectiles simultaneously. 
So if you had a situation where you lost one of the percussion caps or just accidentally you know, slipped when cocking hammers or there are a couple of different situations. Uh, even just the flash hole from this, the right hand hammer is relatively long. If that got fouled um, with powder fouling or you know, soot, dirt, any number of things, you could uh, end up in a situation where the right hand hammer, you know, you could fire the cap all you wanted, but it wouldn't actually detonate a charge. And then you'd, you'd have no option but to either find a corkscrew and pull the front ball or fire the left hand rear charge and, and try and get them both out of the barrel simultaneously. So, like the Walsh Revolver, it's not really surprising that this failed to become a, a huge commercial success. It sounds good on paper, but it has a number of fairly fundamental problems uh, when actually used in the field. We have some markings on the top of the breech here. Uh, Lindsay's, Lindsay, uh, J.P. Lindsay was the inventor, and Young America is the brand name that he came up with for these pistols. Uh, and then of course an 1860 patent. These were all manufactured in the early 1860s. The only other markings on here are the serial numbers. We have one on the frame and one on the barrel itself. Uh, serial number 14. Now there were only about 100 made, so this is still a, a fairly early number, but they would all be two-digit numbers on these. In addition to these three different models of uh, two-shot handguns, Lindsay also manufactured a rifle version of this. He actually convinced the US government to purchase a thousand of what they deemed the model of 1863 double rifle, or double musket, I think it was a rifle. Um, they were actually delivered in 1864 and they were actually used in combat in the Civil War, and not very well. Uh, they apparently had a lot of problems with exploding, which as you can imagine would be a problem. So uh, difficult guns to find today. At some point we'll find one of the rifles to do a video on. For today, just taking a look at one of the large 45 caliber pistols. If you'd like to add this one to your own personal collection, it's a, a pretty remarkably nice specimen. Uh, well, take a look at the description text below. You can find Rock Island's catalog page down there, or a link to it. They have their pictures, their description, their price estimate everything else that you would need, and uh, if you're so inclined you can place a bid right through their website. Thanks for watching.